Hi, my name is Cody and I'm with the console team at HashiCorp and I'm here to take you on another tour of HashiCorp console service on Microsoft Azure. In our previous video, we showed how you could take an Azure Kubernetes cluster and join it to console. With that Kubernetes cluster joined to our service mesh, we were able to deploy an application and show how we can apply consistent policies across that application. Customer environments are complex and virtual machines are still a very real part of most customer architectures. In this video, we're going to show how we can take Azure Virtual Machines and join them to the same service mesh that we joined our previous Kubernetes cluster to. From here, we'll be able to apply consistent security policy to those virtual machines and the applications that live within them. Additionally, we're going to show how you can use Terraform Cloud to manage this environment in an as-code fashion. Let's jump in and take a look. As usual, we start our journey inside the Microsoft Azure console. You can see I have my resource group on my console cluster here. I'll go ahead and click on my resource group so you can see all of the resources that exist. I'll go ahead and click on my console cluster. Now I can hit the console UI directly from here. So if I click on this, we see it loads up console. I can see my default deny in place and my intentions. I can see my current Kubernetes nodes still added from my previous demo. If I want to open this in the external browser, I can go into the console clusters select my cluster, select properties, scroll down, and launch this URL. One of the big changes for this part of the beta is that we've bumped up the console version up to 1.7.2. So again, this is our console cluster and the console UI uh, outside of the Azure window. We're gonna go ahead and fire off some deployments and get us started with some additional machines in our environment. And to do this, we're going to use Terraform Cloud and Visual Studio Code. Here we can see a Terraform manifest that's going to deploy a couple of additional virtual machines. We can see that it's currently ready to commit into GitHub. So I'll give it a commit message. And we'll fire this off and take a look. Go ahead and minimize this screen slightly. We can see Terraform Cloud is going ahead and deploying out these machines. If I dive into Terraform Cloud, I can see the machine being added and I can watch that live execution. This is gonna take a little while, so we're gonna move on with the rest of the demo. Fortunately, I have a few machines already built that we can use for this use case. I'm gonna switch over to my terminal window I'm going to use a simple script I wrote to bring these servers up. Let's switch back and we can watch the server start to come online and see client VM01, 02, and 03 starting to come up. And if we switch over to our services view, we can see our services starting to register. We can see that each one of these services has a sidecar proxy associated with it. In this case, we're using Envoy as a proxy alongside our virtual machines that live inside of Microsoft Azure. If we go back into the Azure console, we can see each one of these machines inside of our resource group. Client one, client two, and client three. If we switch back into console, we can see all of our sidecar proxies are now healthy. These sidecar proxies are how we establish a service mesh between virtual machines as well as nodes in a Kubernetes cluster. If I dive into this sidecar proxy, I click on the sidecar, I can check the upstreams and I can see that we've established communication from this uh, front end VM to our API VM. If I switch back and go look at the API VM's sidecar, and I look at the upstreams here, I can see that we've established communication to the database on the back end. However, if we take a look at our application, we can see that we don't have any API communication or database connectivity allowed. Let's take a look at how we can fix that using Terraform Cloud and Terraform. In our previous demo, we knew that we had a default deny setup to block connectivity in a service mesh configuration. We have a similar problem in this case, and we could go in and create these intentions directly in the UI, but it seems like we might want to go ahead and do that in a more controlled fashion, layering on some of the governance controls that Terraform Cloud allows us to introduce. So let's switch back over to our view, and instead of this window, We'll switch into a different Visual Studio code and we'll add on an additional intention. 
Here we have a declared state of what our application configuration is. I'll go ahead and add on a new intention and we'll name this API allow. We know our source is called front end VM. Our destination is called PyPI VM and we'll do an allow action. We'll save this. We'll go ahead and commit this code. And we'll push it and switch back. Now, if we watch, Terraform Cloud is going to see this commit into GitHub and it's going to automatically run this intention creation. We can see our commit message here for adding API connectivity. We can see the Terraform plan running where it's going to add the intention. And we can see it about to pick up and to do the apply. Our plan's finished. Our apply is currently running. Our apply is completed and we can see connectivity is established. We still don't have database connectivity on the back end, so let's go fix that as well. We'll create another intention, but this time we'll say our, via, our API VM going to the database and we'll allow connectivity there as well. We'll commit this code. Next time we'll spell it correctly. And we'll wait for our run to execute. Our run has started. We can see the plan has finished already. We're applying the secondary portion and our connectivity is allowed. With HashiCorp console service on Azure, our console cluster is living in public cloud already. It only makes sense to manage that platform using Terraform Cloud as well, which is also hosted in public cloud. This allow us, allows us to layer on all of the governance and policy controls that we can consume normally in the workspaces within Terraform Cloud on top of the ability, the service mesh capabilities, the intentions, the security capabilities that console has natively. Finally, the keen eye would have noticed that the other workspace, com workspace completed its run successfully as well. If we go back into console and take a look at our nodes, we can see VM05 and 04 are in place as well on top of the one, two, and three that we'd already deployed. If we go into our intentions view, we can see that we have our two intentions here added as well as our default deny in place. As a final demonstration, we can see there's a couple of odd looks on our page that don't look quite right. It looks like we're missing part of our content. Let's go ahead and update that using Terraform and Terraform Cloud as well. I have a value here for us to go ahead and use to update those, those values. We'll name this and we'll give it a simple set of text to update with. We'll commit this code. and we'll push it. Now it takes a few moments to run and we can go ahead and watch it from here. What we're showing here is the ability to use something called console template to dynamically update applications and platforms that are connected to a console cluster. If we go into the console key value store, we can see I have a simple demo app uh, set of configuration here in our key value store and what appears to be an application configuration here. Currently this is blank. If we back out of this and go and take a look at our Terraform Cloud Run, we can see the apply is finished. And if we go back in, we can see that that's been updated. Let's go take a look at our application. Great. We can see that console template has automatically updated the configuration on this web server with the text that we added in on Terraform. And that about wraps it up. 
In this HashiCorp console service on Azure demo, we showed being able to take Azure VMs and wire them up into a service mesh. We also showed the ability of deploying additional VMs into that service mesh using Terraform Cloud, as well as managing the configurations of console using Terraform Cloud. We added a few intentions to allow secure communication between those different tiers. And we also added application configurations directly into console using console template and having that automatically update our web server for us. Hope you enjoyed this demo. Stay tuned for more exciting features as we continue to grow the HashiCorp console service on Azure. Have a good day.